a world where future Trunks never arrived to save our heroes from Frieza and his father. How will the Z Fighters hold the villainous duo at bay for three whole hours until Goku can make it home from Planet Yardra? <laughs> Cutty and Piccolo down. The king mocks if the Namekian will be able to regenerate himself in this state. Charging in, Gohan can't control his emotions, even despite Krillin's protests. Fortunately, Vegeta arrives just in time to intercept him. He hisses for him not to die needlessly. Glaring up at the Saiyan, the Galactic Overlord queries if he's finished with his little nap. King Cold, father of Frieza, so-called king of the universe. He is the head of the Planet Trade Organization. In this story, he is the general who sends the Elite Squadron to Planet Yardra in order to kill the Saiyan responsible for the defeat of Frieza thinking it was actually Vegeta. Although he's at the top of the most powerful race in the universe, his power is inferior to that of his son's. At least if we're under the assumption the form he usually takes is his full potential. He takes advantage of his imposing stature to give an illusion of power. Then, Vegeta. The proud Saiyan prince who travels to Earth with his companion Nappa after Raditz' defeat. He fought Frieza on planet Namek and was killed before being resurrected by Purunga. After Frieza's defeat, he trained hard by destroying many of his military bases. Having become much stronger, he waits for the return of his rival Kakarot to take his revenge. Before that, he's going to have to face Frieza and his father. Is his new power enough to defeat these terrible enemies? The proud Saiyan is eager to show him. I can't stand your face! I'm gonna erase that smug look! However, new power, same results. He grabs Vegeta's face and cackles that this poor wretch still thinks he can take him on. The prideful arrogance of the Saiyans annoys him. The villain powers up an energy ball done with this battle. All the while, he chortles that Vegeta made a lot of noise for nothing, bidding him farewell. On the ground again, there's nothing he can do. Same goes for the others. With their own plan also not going the way they'd hoped, Yamcha calls out for Krillin to retreat, but he's not willing to leave their friends behind. Unfortunately, the Frost Demon isn't going to give them the option to escape. As two more of our heroes fall to the ground, Frieza bellows that they should be grateful that he so much as let them take a shot at him. In fact, he's pretty sure that attack just now didn't even kill him. Alas, this only leads him to crescendo into a signature laugh while admitting if only because I'd like to see them die slowly. <laughs> Saiyan becoming enveloped in a golden aura. This is impossible. What's going on? Looking to our protagonist, Boma pleads for Vegeta to hang in there. He's their only hope. And Gohan seeing this, Vegeta, he has the same energy as his dad. Has he also become a Super Saiyan? I'm getting pushed away! Shocking twist. Vegeta somehow tapped into the faux Super Saiyan form Goku used in the Lord Slug movie, obliterating Cold in nearly the exact same way Goku defeated King Piccolo. But the sad truth is, he, like all the others, has fallen out of the battle. A frightened Gohan turns to his mentor to question if he thinks his dad will get here in time to save them, but unwilling to answer the obvious truth. He only warns the child not to try anything stupid and to only focus on saving himself. And witnessing the death of his father, the same who resurrected him and didn't even want to land on this planet in the first place, Frieza offers barely a pittance of sentiment for his progenitor. He howls, well done, monkey scum. He killed his father. Although he cares very little for his death, he refuses to accept the fact that they Saiyans continue to ridicule him. They will all die for this affront. Two hours and 30 minutes before Goku's arrival. Facing off against the son of the warrior who defeated him. 
He believes Gohan to either be fearless or a complete fool. He'll see. He doesn't plan on killing the boy right now. He wants to see Goku's face contort in pure terror as he watches the life fade from his eyes. Causing the child to power up and shout that he's not afraid of him. He will do anything to stop him from killing his friends and he's not giving up. Gohan, no! hitting Frieza with all of his strength. The monster brushes it off like it's nothing. Sending Gohan to the ground. He barks if the stupid monkey really thinks he can beat him. In space. Sensing what's going on, Goku just felt his son's key plummet. Chouch is heading towards Korin's tower, no doubt to hopefully get some senzu beans. Vegeta, Krillin, Piccolo, and the others are all close to death. He pleads for Gohan to hang in there. He'll be back soon. But if he can sense their energies, at the same time on Earth, picking himself up, the young warrior chirps back that he's gonna hold out until his dad gets here. He's gonna see him beat Frieza for good. And such optimism. He certainly is the spawn of Goku. We'll see just how much longer he can resist. Charging his death beam, this is the end. Arriving just as we predicted, Goku makes his appearance much to the surprise of the villain. Bringing his son to tears of joy. He turns to him and instructs to get their friends to safety. He's gonna take care of Frieza once and for all. Upon letting the situation process, the demon screams for Goku to prepare to taste his vengeance. Before, Goku states that he let him live on planet Namek and he immediately threw it back in his face. He never thought he'd survive that last attack or even the explosion of that planet. But he sees now that he'll never stop. Goku can't turn a blind eye to what he's done here today. His reign of terror will end for the good of all the people who's lived under his oppression. Although now held together by what appears to be junkyard parts and multiple conch pieces, Frieza chortles that he's invincible. The Saiyan thinks he can beat him. He then questions how he got here without a ship. By his own projections, his arrival wasn't expected until much later. Who tells how it's thanks to the instant transmission technique he learned on Yardrat. He stayed there for a year to master it completely. The Fiend finds this interesting. He's learned to teleport. He inquires how Goku just said he spent an entire year there, and he's still alive. The Saiyan is a lot tougher than he thought. He had the Ginyu Force sent to that planet with the intention of conquering it, but they gave up. He himself wouldn't be able to send his armies given their weak resistance to the planet's atmosphere. So he left the Ardress free knowing they could be useful to him one day, like the Saiyans who he exploited for years. But our hero doesn't understand. What does he mean? And it's really quite simple. The atmosphere of Yardrite is livable, but it's quite toxic to organisms that don't originate from that planet. Goku is slowly dying from simply being there for so long. He may have escaped Namek's explosion, but he will indeed still die. Prompting the warrior to scoff that Frieza's either lying, or he's a lot stronger than the atmosphere he's talking about. Either way, he's ignored his warnings, so he's going to finish him. Die, son, don't you? It's useless, Frieza! Following a short skirmish, Frieza has to remark on the determination of his blows. Is he finally taking this seriously? It's too little too late. The Saiyan will die along with his planet. Goku snarls not to make him laugh. He was hoping that he'd see the power get between them and give up on his own. But his pride blinds him. He's done giving him chances. Almost to the point of madness now. Our protagonist asks, what's the point? They both know Goku outclasses him. Is it that hard to admit defeat? Giving the villain the opportunity to say what we're all thinking. Goku is very naive. The warrior warns him not to even think about it. If he tries to blow up the earth, he'll turn him into ashes. Launching a barrage at the same attack that chopped him in two. He wonders how the Super Saiyan will stop him. Dodging him, he just doesn't learn from his past mistakes. This won't work and he knows it. And he realizes this is only a distraction. 
Charging his death ball, Frieza screams that he'll finally get rid of these filthy monkeys and their absurd legend. But using the instant transmission, it's over. And just like that, the fight comes to an end. For the first time in decades, the universe is rid of Frieza and his empire. Peace had returned to the planet Earth. It seemed all was well. But Son Goku was facing an invisible enemy, a heart disease from planet Yardrat. Goku's excellent physical condition had slowed the progression of the virus, but over time, it ate away at him, gradually making him weaker and weaker, until finally, our hero breathed his last. Goku's death left an immeasurable void in the hearts of his closest family, his son Gohan, and his wife Chi Chi. The Dragon Balls did not have the power to resurrect him this time. But as one story ends, another begins. Son Gohan trained to become a powerful warrior in his father's image. Soon, he will face powerful and terrifying enemies. But that's a story you already know.